Hello, everybody ready? So today I will talk about RVM2, the plans, what we want to do and, and why we are in the state of changing and um, providing new version. Uh, I changed the title of the talk to P P Python version manager because it's part of the pro project. So uh, near the end, I will explain more details about this. I'm Michael Papis. You can find me on, on Twitter, uh, mpapis uh, at Gmail. Uh, I'm working on engine, uh, at EngineYard as RVM release manager, so mostly on open source. I really touch some uh, closed code. Let's start with definition of RVM. Uh, RVM is uh, Ruby Environment Manager. You can basically switch different versions of Rubies, different sets of your environment. So f first step, you install Ruby. So RVM provides possibility to install uh, many different Rubies. Uh, the basic ones and also those uh, that are less known like Iron Ruby, uh, Mac Ruby. So second functionality is switching these Rubies. If you get uh, already Ruby installed, you want to use it, but you have a lot of projects, so you want to uh, change the environment to match only, to, to include only libraries, gems you, you use. There is also a lot of support tasks. Uh, you can change gem sets, uh, you can install Ruby gems, install libraries, customize Ruby installation, patches, flags. There is a lot more. These are the most used functions. So what, what we have learned with RVM1. So the basic process of installing Ruby is very simple. You t configure, make, make install, and it's ready. But now it's not that simple. Uh, you need uh, first to uh, first need to download it. Then you need to create directory to compile it. You need to extract it. You need to know a lot of additional stuff to make it working properly. And finally, you need to switch your environments manually. So you need to m manually change your path, like the last entry path equals. And you can do. You have to do it every time you change your project. So there is a lot of options that are supported by RVM. Different systems, different architectures, different Ruby implementations, different versions of them, and, and different tools. So RVM helps uh, with installing them. It's quite easy, and in mo most times it works. Like the minimal stuff of compilation. But then we are going to a point where you try to do something different. And it appears it's not always that easy. You need to uh, start to read. There is a lot of documentation. Uh, you need to know some uh, corner cases that are special just for the project. Like in this case that's described here, we use uh, Ruby uh, Race 30 which uh, have different requ requirements for bundler, and it will not work with the current one. It requires older version, and because how uh, Ruby gems works, you need to uninstall that old version and install new one. You need to create new new gem set. It everything gets complicated. So there is a lot of information you need to know uh, if you go off the path or if you are using some less known uh, systems, and uh, there's a lot of options. There is uh, 100 flags for RVM install, so you can do a lot of stuff, but to know what, sh what to do, you would have to first get to know them. Uh, there is also uh, a lot of information how to uh, differ sometimes differently stuff behaves, and it's described in RVM nodes. Uh, basically, most users don't read it, but if you have problems, the things are described there. For every platform, there is RVM requirements, which will display uh, information, what's the 
prerequisites for Ruby, for different implementations, for your platform, if there is something special that has to be done. It's described in RVM requirements. That's, that's really a lot of options. There is 1,500 pa uh, pages uh, questions at Stack Overflow. There is 100 pages at documentation from RVM. There is multiple tutorials and screencasts for every system. There are not uh, event tutorials for Windows, how to use RVM on Windows. And it's, it's really, really a lot of stuff that, uh, that might require some information for, for users. And this ends often in the statement, RVM doesn't work. And I know it. So we try to fix it with uh, providing uh, proper behaviors, default behaviors, patches. Uh, we give uh, flags, force proper flow. But there is a lot of information. And even a warning is displayed. Not always users read it. Uh, and not always it's uh, something easy to understand. So there is a lot of information that user would have to process to go to some point that it's working. And uh, even stopping execution it doesn't work. Users uh, skip that step because th there is too, lo too much. Users avoid that uh, getting known with that knowledge. We try to automate the things, but it's not always working. So that's example of the uh, automation. If you, of the automation and uh, of not having it. Like for all the rubies on OS X, you have to provide these two flags to compile. And it's not automated yet because it's the new thing for uh, OS X 10.8, uh, Mountain Lion. And this is not automated. But other stuff like using all the Ruby gems because it's really all through Ruby. It doesn't support the new Ruby gems. It will automatically to switch to the older version. On the end, you get a warning that you are using really old Ruby, which requires a, a four patches just to make, uh, make it compile properly. If you would be using uh, standard uh, latest version, which is uh, provided on the end of the message, there, you, it, you will be a lot secure. There is also a lot of boilerplate code in RVM. If you are in the uh, use, uh, use, use case, you have six, seven, seven lines. If that code would be written in better language like Python or Ruby, it will be just one line. So we need to remove that boilerplate code to make it easy to read and maintain. So there is no actual framework behind RVM because there is not, not really big uh, culture for working in the shell. There is no frameworks, good frameworks. Uh, so we need to support two shell languages, Bash and ZSH. It's really complicated. Uh, it's, uh, you test stuff on one, one language, and later it appears that half of the users have broken version because it works on the other version. Uh, there are also mi multiple systems, and the, they use different implementation, implementations of tools like uh, BSD and Unix 5, and they are different. So every tool we use to pr do some functionality has different flags and behaves differently. So we have to account for a lot of cases. RVM is monolithic, so it's really one big program. You cannot separate it. You cannot take just part of it and uh, use for compilation of Ruby. You could, but you have then know a lot of the internals, how the stuff is produced, where it's produced, and uh, how to take it just for you. There are m multiple Ruby version. The environment changes. Uh, there, are, there are custom settings from user, that, uh, not only for Ruby, but uh, custom settings for the, the systems. So it's really, really complicated to add more code to the existing really big code base, which 
has a lot of boilerplate code. So summary, supporting everything is hard. Uh, we, have, we have too much options. Uh, users don't have to know everything. The stuff can be out, uh, the, the work can be automated. Us users should just be able to press enter it, and it should be done. In worst case, they should go get information that will be provided clearly, uh, to giving a way to fix it. Uh, and adding new code is complicated for the, for the current state. So we have big custom code, uh, hard to maintain, with many dependencies. A small break, binary rubies. That's what, what I will be talking about. It's possible because uh, of binary rubies. RVM compiles rubies uh, and provides uh, them in compiled form for different platforms. So when you install Ruby for the last two, two months, then you will get a Ruby which is compiled already by me or one of contributors, and you don't have to compile it by yourself. You get uh, two minutes on really fast machine, on slow machines it's hours. So I asked my son to provide a picture of saving trees because we don't use a lot of energy. If my, my, one million users would have to compile Ruby, it's really big time of processor, a lot of power. And we are saving trees because it's no more required to compile rubies. So it's end of the break. We continue with RVM2, where we are, go where we are going. Uh, so we will have new implementation. Uh, we wanted to use SM framework. Uh, but we will not use it. Uh, we will use specification of SM framework, and we will write uh, as, uh, RVM2 uh, in Ruby. Uh, big thanks to uh, the group Druk or PL. They helped me to understand that's possible, and uh, we can go this road. So we. We will try to avoid shell scripting as much as possible because uh, shell uh, is really changing environment and it's not secure to write big code base for shell. Uh, we will use SM framework as specification because it gives uh, a good base, a good start for uh, writing something. There is already a lot of uh, code for SM framework uh, which uh, will, which the f which works with the specification. So uh, implementing it will, it will allow us to uh, get a lot of components that are already read available. We we'll reuse RubyGems infrastructure. We don't want to provide our own system of plugins and uh, adding stuff to RVM uh, outside. We already have, uh, we are using Ruby so we can use the existing Ruby gems infrastructure, we will install gems which will provide more functionalities and you can select what things of Ruby, of uh, managing Ruby uh, uh, you want to use. We'll, thanks to switching to Ruby, we'll eliminate a lot of boilerplate code. Uh, the, pl the plugins will be part of the gems so it will be quite easy and we need to improve test, testing. We will improve testing. It's already part of the process, uh, but we want to have a, a lot more tests. So we will extract concepts ad, as games. Uh, so the first most important thing of RVM is switching environment. And we want to extract it to allow switching not only Ruby environments, but also other uh, systems like Python, Java, uh, and other implementations, Erlang. There is, there, there is a lot of tools, uh, languages that, that don't have these tools or don't have them in the wall scope like RVM allows it. So we want to provide, uh, fill the gap, and finally uh, to provide uh, common, uh, common specification of your application so it's not like you specify RVMRC to provide Ruby version. Then you 
then you have a virtual file, then you have some uh, custom uh, file for JavaScript, then you have separate file for, file for Travis. It should be possible to switch version for the whole project uh, of different uh, languages, not just Ruby. We, we, we want to provide more package dependencies. Right now, RVM provides only information about what is required, and you have to do it manually. It's really not necessary step. That can be automated, and user can uh, gain from this. Uh, we want to have virtual package manager because uh, most of the systems already have package managers, so uh, we, they do a really good job with maintaining them, with providing code that's compatible with your system, and we don't want to uh, go there and uh, ask users to compile everything from scratch. Where, when it's possible, we, we want to reuse the uh, existing package manager. That's why uh, the virtual package manager will, will detect if it's available any package manager and reuse it instead of compiling code. Uh, we want to have conventions for uh, custom configuration because defining a lot of stuff for packages, there, there is multiple options for every package and uh, it should be possible to dynamically adjust to the requirements of users. So uh, an easy way of customizing is needed. And finally, we want to support advanced hooks models so users can uh, not only use RVM and then do stuff manually, uh, but then they can write hooks to have different actions like installing software, installing package, switching Ruby, switching Python. And when they do it, they have a hook and they can uh, execute the custom code. Package management, I already, <laughs> I already described this in previous slide. Uh, there are a few additional points. Uh, we want to improve the dependencies right now. Uh, like I mentioned, there is only displayed info, uh, information what's needed. So we, we want to have uh, defined dependencies for packages where uh, when we install Ruby, Libyam will be installed, OpenSSL will be installed, and users don't have to think uh, how, how to do it on this, this particular system. Buying virtual uh, private server uh, they can, user can log in and start the process without thinking how to install packages on this Debian, uh, Red Hat. Any system that, uh, that's popular should be supported and automated. So the switching will be, uh, in, and installing stuff will be a lot easier. Uh, but uh, if we reuse existing infrastructure, we need to add verification. There are sometimes uh, requirements for packages that need to be met, met to, for proper work. And if it, these requirements are not met, the ver verification should notify RV, uh, RVM and user about this. And automated steps like uh, compilation manual should be done to prevent errors. Because a lot of these errors that happen, they can be detected and they can be uh, prevented by writing some automated code. And uh, finally, we want to uh, extend the binary Ruby support, not only to Ruby. We want to provide, uh, compile packages uh, if it's needed for, for some platform, like OS X doesn't have a uh, native package manager. So there are few package managers for OS X. You don't know which one will be available. So some packages can be provided in binary form. Users will not be forced to compile them by themselves. We want also to improve user experience, uh, configuration tool. If you have 100 options, it's really hard to choose or search for them. It should be possible with a simple tool which will interpret code not only... <coughs> Sorry. And the tool will not only interpret uh, options for routing inside of program, but this can be used as specification tool to provide a tool for configuration. We need to uh, 
do a lot more of automa automation, a lot better error detection. We need to improve documentation. If there will be so much options, then the documentation is very important. We started thinking about uh, case studies to provide information uh, for different target groups, because it's not like only developers use, uh, are interested in RVM. There are also other groups like managers or uh, uh, there are different target groups for RVM. So we need to provide information uh, specified for those groups, not just for developers. And finally, uh, uh, using uh, this configuration tool in command line, maybe it would be possible to provide a tool to provide graphical management, like we have already a tool for uh, OSX, uh, Jeveler Box, which gives us an option to uh, visually install Rubies and to see the whole process. So we will have improvements. We will increase scope to include other tools, Python, Java, Erlang, but we will also separate concerns because the monolithic structure uh, is really hard to maintain. If we separate concerns and have separate, we can uh, improve code quality and when we can improve testing. So status. We have some good news. We have really good base, RVM1, good base in the meaning of uh, a lot of knowledge, a lot of information that is required to build that tool. It's tested, so we can reproduce in RVM2, uh, reproduce the same commands, and we will know they will work the same, because we have uh, black box testing, which, will, uh, that, which doesn't depend on the code. We will be using Ruby, so uh, it's re quite good code, code base, uh, go good base to write something. And we know what's wrong and uh, uh, what to fix. There are also some bad news. Uh, we still work on the detailed plan. We have some plans, but it's not really uh, detailed to make it uh, progressing. Uh, so we can uh, see our progress. We uh, still work on it. We have limited resources. Uh, I work mostly alone on RVM. There are a few contributors. But because the current code base was so complicated and it was different language, uh, it was a barrier for contribution. And switching to Ruby uh, hopefully will uh, help uh, to get more contributions. And at full, it seems quite simple. But every time when we think about a rewriting, it's always a lot of work and it might take some time. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions? Are you working with or getting any funding from the Travis guys? They're obviously very dependent on RBM and they also support Python and Java and all the stuff. That Do you, you know the Travis guys? <laughs> I've heard of them. They're running around getting funding from everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have knowing one of the reasons that Mark is doing what he's doing is somewhat of a funding of Travis itself. So that, uh, sorry to answer the question for you. Uh, no, uh, so it, no, it's uh, it's really good thing because I work closely with Travis. They use uh, RVM, and they are the biggest users of RVM right now. They run uh, thousands of installations, and they run uh, RVM daily. And RVM is tested on Travis. We are working uh, together now with Travis on uh, providing a new service that will uh, build Rubies not only on one platform, like it's now on uh, Ubuntu. So the tests are run only for Ubuntu. And we know that Ruby, the tests that are run for Ruby, are run on Ubuntu. We want to extend it to the scope of more services and uh, include it uh, and mix it with providing binary Rubies. So we will not only run tests on more platforms, but we also, in the effect, have uh, binary Rubies for multiple platforms 
this will be automated service, so it will be less work for me. I will not have to do it manually every time a new Ruby is produced. Uh, a small RS, RSS reader can detect the situation a new Ruby is provided. Build it, run tests. If it's ready, upload to a server. And we have available a new Ruby in means of few hours because of multiple platforms will take time. But it's possible to start this and uh, after the service will be available, it hopefully can be extended to provide uh, binary compiled games, not only for, uh, like we have now, for mostly Windows, sometimes for OS X, but uh, Ruby gems are limited to pr of providing j binary gems for Linux, and hopefully uh, not only developers will have binary gems on OS X, but will have also them for Linux, so production will be easier. It will be not required to compile everything. So we are working closely together to, to uh, improve stuff, and uh, we help, help each other. So Fedora and uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux is introducing the dynamic stacks which enable multiple version of packages on the same system. Uh, how are you planning to integrate with this? So, uh, because RVM2 will be written in Ruby, I will be not uh, forced to use uh, one single path to, for installing Rubies. I don't have to use one source for installing Rubies. I can detect the situation that multiple Rubies are available from Red Hat and list them in RVM list. So users will be able to use not only Rubies installed by RVM, but by other tools. If your choice is to install Rubies with Ruby build. It's possible, you can do it. Uh, I don't recommend it, but you can use other tools to, to build Ruby and to then include them in RVM. It's mostly because we will have Ruby, it will simplify the code base and allow us to do more. Other questions? So there is a prototype, quite small, working on the minimal switching of rubies and the matching is not the same as in RVM1 and it requires RVM1 to run. Uh, so it's very limited, but I will push the code uh, after the talk and uh, it will be available at R uh, github slash rvm slash rvm. That will be the URL for the new project. Hmm? Old one is when is Seguin slash RVM. Oh, it's never moved, it? It's never. No, uh, we just got the RVM organization on GitHub. It's one week. I didn't even include it. Okay. Other question? No. I have a question. Uh, how do you compile rubies right now? I mean, do you have any target like JLPC? Version. So let's say that I get this Ruby version, I can install it with my old Ubuntu 8.10 or so something. This will require cross compilation if you would uh, yeah. want to compile uh, on one platform everything. And cross compilation, at least in my experience, is uh, complicated. It's, we have uh, right now other options. We can have virtual machines for every system, and you can get the, the whole system as it is without. Uh, combining stuff uh, with uh, cross compilation without providing different uh, versions of uh, GCC because it's also required for the older platforms. So you, you can easily get virtual boxes for most of the systems you can imagine. If they are not available, there are instructions and uh, there is project uh, VV uh, which you can use to build uh, virtual boxes that are not available and uh, uh, we'll use, uh, there is a project RVM binary, which we started working with Travis, and uh, then you just connect which virtual boxes uh, you want to build uh, and provide rubies for. Well, uh, I ask you because I'm from Vietnamese and we build like cross-platform Ruby binaries. Mm -hmm. It's not that simple, but we have to choose like the very specific version of GLIPC just to be able to use the same binary and uh, have it running, let's say, on uh, old Red Hat 9, or let's say Ubuntu 10.4, or Fedora 
the latest. So I think it's a place for cooperation. For cooperation if so it, it would be possible. It would be possible, but uh, there are other concerns. Like if you compile with headers of OpenSSL uh, 1.0 and there is only 0 0.9, you would have to detect all the libraries uh, which are needed. And it's a lot easier to take the system as, as it is. You know that will be that system. And uh, right now with uh, Vagran, it's so easy, but I, I don't think uh, I would go with the cross compilation. It would be a bigger headache. Okay. There was other question? Um, so with uh, RDM2 written in Ruby, does that mean that uh, you're going to need Ruby installed in order to use it, or is there going to be some sort of bootstrapping process? Yes, yeah, so, so we have uh, binary Ruby. So the Ruby is already compiled for multiple platforms. And uh, you could use it, uh, this uh, compiled Ruby. It's uh, a really short bootstrapping script, 10, 20 lines of shell code. But that's the end. We don't have any more code. Before binary Rubies, it was almost, almost impossible. And we, was, we were planning to do it uh, in shell. And uh, it was always postponed, postponed, because of the complexity of shell scripting. And now with Ruby, we can. Uh, try to speed it up. It's, it seems a lot easier. So uh, in the worst case, when there is no binary Ruby for that platform, we have JRuby. You will need to install Java, get JRuby, which probably will be just separate installation command. If, if your platform failed, get Java, and it will be working with JRuby. So there, there are multiple options. And uh, it's without binary rubies, it won't be available. It wouldn't be available. Other questions? I have one question. So if, let's say that we, com we have compiled version, and it depends on, let's say, Ubuntu OpenSSL, mm -hmm. what happens if uh, you do APT update, and OpenSSL version is updated, upgraded, and it doesn't work anymore, let's say, with uh, my Ruby? So yeah, OK, so we compile for every version and for every platform. So uh, there will be a lot of builds. But we are sure there is compatibility for every platform. And if you upgrade your system, you should also upgrade every application you use. So if you have compiled Rubies, you should also upgrade them. OK, so if I upgrade my system, then I need to, then something may go wrong with my Ruby application. Yeah, that's the common problem uh, on OS, for OS X users. They have some Rubies installed or the, some libraries, and they switch from Mountain to Mountain Leon. And then versions of system application change, and they, are, they should upgrade everything. And without doing this upgrade, it, it won't work. So maybe it would be possible if RVM would check if the system is the same. So it's, it should be possible. If you write an issue, it will be one of the steps that RVM2 does. We'll check if the version is the same. And if it's not, it will warn you that you need to upgrade your rubies. So that check, is, it seems quite trivial. But it's required to reinstall every, every software when you change the base of the system. Because if you just update version of uh, Ubuntu, mm -hmm. updating will uh, they care to provide all, only compatible versions. And uh, when you upgrade to the next version, then stuff can change. The libraries change, and you need, need to recompile or download new binaries for the correct platform that's, that, that's currently in use. Other questions? OK, so thank you very much.